The last step in the uh, chest examination anteriorly is the auscultation. As we have learned, the uh, stethoscope consists of a proximal part, which are the ear pieces, and a uh, distal part, which is the diaphragm and bell. Some suggest to auscultate the chest with the bell, but uh, the traditional way is to auscultate with the uh, diaphragm. We have a uh, few points uh, should tell the patient about them. First of all, I should tell the patient that he should uh, take and uh, exhale and inspire a breath from his mouth rather than the nose. Not so fast and not so slow, not so deep. And uh, during the auscultation, you have to auscultate the areas in the anterior chest and in the axilla and try to avoid two to three centimeter from the midline and as we have learned in the percussion the lower chest border should be the sixth rib anteriorly and the eighth rib in the axilla because as we know these are the border or lower borders of the lung below which we will have the diaphragm and the abdominal content in which the breath sound may be altered or there may be uh, bow, even bowel sound in the following way I'll direct the stethoscope anteriorly the ear pieces so as to fit properly with my external auditory meatus in such a way and I'll tell the patient about these instructions بس حماد هسا حاليا راح اشيك صدرك بالسماعة اريدك تاخذ نفس وذبة من حلقك مو من خشمك مو كل السريع ولا كلش بطيء بحالتك لا دي ادي بس شوي اكثر منها ومن اقول لك انا اوكي تقدر شوي تدير انه وجهك هيك عشت يدك فيرست اوف اول اي اسكلتيت اوفر ذا ايبيسس هسه خذ نفس وذبة قوي هسه خذ نفس وذبة بعد عشت يدك بعد 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 After that, once you finish the auscultation, you have to check for uh, vocal resonance. It is as the same as the vocal prometas, with the exception that here we will use the stethoscope instead of the palmar uh, surface of both hands in the following way. Gul arba arbaein. Arba arbaein. Arba arbaein. Arba arbaein. Arba And so on. You have to continue all these areas. Really, in the auscultation of the chest, you have to put in your minds the following way. That's to say, you have to uh, present, present your finding in the following manner. First of all, you have, to, uh, you have to know whether the air entry in both lungs are good, poor, or reduced. This is one. Second, you have to check the breath sounds, whether it is vesicular, or bronchial or vesicular breathing with a prolonged expiratory phase and the third one check whether or not the patient had any adventitious or added sound in the form of wheezes, crackles, pneumothorax click and, uh, uh, and uh, pleural rub. Uh, let's take a look really about the breath sounds. We have the following breath sound when you hear the chest of the patient. I'll draw it or show it now. We have the first one in which there is full inspiratory phase, third expiratory phase with no gap. This is vesicular breathing. The second type of breathing is that of full inspiratory phase, gap and full expiratory phase. This is bronchial breathing. And the third type is vesicular breathing with a prolonged expiratory phase in which there is an inspiratory phase, full, and then expiratory phase that is a prolonged. This is vesicular breathing with a prolonged expiratory phase. This usually occurs in COPD and asthma. Bronchial breathing occurs, for example, in patients with uh, fibrosis consolidation collapse, and this should be the normal breath sounds over all the uh, lung tissues. 
really when you hear an uh, added sound you have uh, to well, you have to check the following uh, issues first of all if you had an added sound in the form of crackles you have to check whether the crackles are inspiratory or biphasic if it is inspiratory you have to check whether it is early inspiratory middle inspiratory or late inspiratory early inspiratory for example a current patient with uh, bronchiolitis while a patient with pulmonary edema may develop middle inspiratory phase crackles while those who develop late inspiratory crackles may have uh, for example uh, lung cavities lung abscess lung fibrosis those who have coarse gravitation or coarse crackles may have uh, bronchiectasis for example once you detect a crackles you have to put your stethoscope upon the chest and ask the patient to cough because sometimes at the lung apices crackles fine crackles are uh, normal this is all about the crackles about the wheezes once you check the wheeze you have to know the uh, mechanism of the origin of wheeze this is one uh, you have to know about it, the pathophysiology and then you have to check whether the wheezes is uh, whether the wheezes are inspiratory expiratory or biphasic this is one second you have to check whether the wheezes is polyphonic or monophonic that's to say having just single type of tone or variable types or variable tones what we call it polyphonic this is two uh, the third one you have to check whether the wheezes are altered with the coughing or uh, not and then about the uh, wheeze you have to know whether it is high pitched or low pitched uh, wheeze really about whether it is low pitched or high pitched wheeze and whether it is polyphonic or monophonic these are mainly designated for postgraduate candidate while uh, the undergraduate uh, student candidate should know just about the wheeze about the mechanism behind their origin this is one and whether the wheezes are expiratory inspiratory or uh, biphasic and whether or not it is altered with the cuff and really this depends upon the guidelines provided in their uh, college or in their medical school all these issues and techniques are about the auscultation uh, of the chest anterior